Hello, this is a lowercase l, this is a capital I. Depending on the font you're using, these two symbols might look identical, differ only in height, or have different serifs, these little things. Two characters that look the same but represent different things are called homoglyphs, from Greek meaning same carving. I and L aren't the only homoglyphs, lowercase l and the number 1 look quite similar in some fonts, to the point where many typewriters were made without a 1 key, you just use L instead. Also, somewhere on your keyboard is probably this character, a vertical line. It's not a letter or even a standard punctuation mark in English, so what's it doing there? Enter the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, or ASCII for short. Originally designed as a code for teletype machines, ASCII has become a computer standard for encoding the Latin alphabet. Although its original 1963 version does not feature the vertical bar, the later versions in 1965 and 1967 both do, and the 1977 revision specifies that the bar should be solid rather than broken. ASCII is a 7-bit code, meaning that each symbol takes up to 7 of the 1s and zeros that make up digital information. This means it can encode 2 to the 7th power different symbols, which is 128. This is enough for 26 capital letters, 26 lowercase letters, 10 numerals, a few punctuation marks and characters like the vertical bar, and some special commands to do things like signal the end of a message or ring the teletype's bell. As we moved from teletypes to computers, the special characters got repurposed for programming, and the vertical bar is now indispensable to programmers, so it stays on the keyboard. Thus, we have the four members of our ASCII homoglyph club. I, L, 1, and vertical line. Now, ASCII is great for writing English on computers, but what if you're trying to write in a language other than English? You might well need more symbols. This could be anything from a few extra letters for German, to a whole new alphabet for something like Greek, to the thousands of Chinese characters. How is your poor computer supposed to keep track? Enter the Unicode Consortium. They may sound like a robot empire, but you may know them as the group in charge of emoji. They're an organization dedicated to making every language in the world writable on computers, and there are a lot of languages. The consortium's main project, Unicode, currently features 154 different scripts, with more on the way. Unicode is how your computer displays foreign languages on the internet, and it is the largest set of characters that nearly everyone's computer can probably display. As you can imagine, with 154 different scripts, there are a ton of new members for a vertical line club. There are letters like the Greek letter iota, the Cyrillic letter I used in Belarus and Ukraine, a different Cyrillic letter called palochka used in the Caucasus, the letter for the dental click sound, the Germanic rune isat, the Tifinach letter yan, and the Nko letter a. There are punctuation marks like the Devanagari Danda, the Hebrew Pasek, the Pahag's Pashad, and the vertical dash. And of course numbers like the North Indic fraction one quarter, the Vi numeral one, the Sujo numeral one, the Old Italic numeral one, the Attic numeral one, and I think you get the idea. There are also a few weirdos like the mathematical symbol for divides, this line explicitly for drawing boxes, this left one eighth block, this Chinese stroke, the power on symbol, and the musical bar line. And there are plenty more. If you want to explore yourself, a good starting point would be the Unicode Consortium's list of confusable characters, link in the description. So how many vertical line characters are there? The answer should be easy, just look at each of the 143,859 Unicode characters, see if it's a vertical line, and make a list. Right? Right? So here's the thing about Unicode. Unicode is a big table of characters and how to encode them so that your computer can read them. It doesn't tell your computer how to take these codes and turn them to something that you, viewer, can see. That's the job of fonts. Even if we have a standard character set to work with like Unicode, the way those characters are displayed differ from font to font. For the examples previously, I used where possible an open source font called Liberation Sans, so we wouldn't have pesky serifs messing up our neat vertical lines. But even Liberation Sans isn't completely serif free. Something like the Roman numeral 1 still looks different from a simple vertical line, even if it is one at heart, and might be displayed as such in some even less serif-y font. And while you may have been complaining earlier that 1 has a hook on top and thus isn't a vertical line, in Formation Sans Regular there's no hook, so ha, I was right the whole time. But in all seriousness, what font you use can have a huge impact on what text looks like for you. You could make a terrible font where every single Unicode character is displayed as some kind of vertical line. You could make a slightly less terrible font where even vertical line has a serif on it. The only way you're going to know how many different vertical lines your computer can display is by picking a font and trying it yourself. So have at it, homoglyph hunters! And of course, 
Thanks for watching.